Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, we are here with uh, some teachers who are blogging together or writing together. I don't know if you guys call it a blog or not, but on the uh, Cooperative Catalyst. That's the first question to come up here. But um, um, my connection here is Chad Sansing, and so I'm going to throw it to Chad and um, ask him to get uh, to introduce us. It's uh, July 20th. Um, we are one for the one of the first times we are um, on edtechtalk.com um, but when you go there edtechtalk.com slash live you'll find a um, Ustream that Jeff Lebo is uh, broadcasting out from a Google Plus Hangout um, which is all brand new language to all of us so we're kind of figuring this out um, we've never been on video before so that's a little shocking too I had to make my bed in the background <laughs> <laughs> but um, but welcome everybody. We're real excited. Trying to um, not talk about how we're doing this tonight, which you know we want to do since it's all new and everything, but really about what the uh, the cooperative catalyst is all about um, and some of the projects you guys are working on and who you are and you could do some introductions perhaps. So Chad, uh, why don't you start us off there? Welcome. Great. All right. Oh. Well, thanks for having us on tonight. Um, this is cool. Uh, it's always fun to get together with everybody from the co-op. Um, I'll probably shorten it either to co-op or co-op catalyst. So if I say those words, I'm, I'm talking about the same thing as cooperative catalyst. So we can um, call it co-op, yeah? OK, yeah, OK. The co-op or co-op catalyst, yeah, absolutely. Um, so welcome, uh, fellow writers. It's great to see you. Uh, I thought maybe we could just introduce ourselves and by way of introducing ourselves, say kind of who we are, where we're from, what we do, and then maybe how we got to the co-op in, in the first place. Um, how, how, what was the connection that brought us, uh, each one of us, to the co-op? Um, so I'm, my name's Chad Sansing, and um, I guess a year and a half ago or so, uh, I made the elevator pitch to Aaron Eiler that we try to put something together that would be like a, a Siskel and Ebert of education, specifically to comment on uh, education reform movements. And Aaron had uh, a stellar idea and invited Adam Burke, and, and that inspired me to invite in the equally stellar Paula White, and since then, uh, all kinds of stellar people have, have joined, and we've moved further and further away from writing together about the kind of central uh, topic, uh, central theme of democratic education, and while that still, I think, in, in many ways, infuses our work and our, and our approach to education, um, it's not it's not as planned. It feels a lot more organic, and, and it feels like a, just a really great community and place to be as an educator and a writer. So, and and I, I'm not asking you to give definitions right now, but I just want to uh, point to a couple of keywords you just said there. Educational reform means a lot of different things in a lot of different places. So as you guys right. are talking, you might kind of you know, say which part of the educational reform thing you're in, <laughs> if, if we can say but, that thing. You know, that's, and then democratic well, education also. But yeah, again, go ahead, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what we say now is that we're, we're in the business of educational transformation at, at, at Reform. We had, a, we had a great conversation together, and other people can touch on this. Um, we recognize that about at Reform, and you know that's not necessarily a debate that we want to choose either side of. We're trying to push things in, in, a, in a direction okay. that kind of gets people to have some escape velocity from that particular black hole. <laughs> who, who wants to go next? I see David, Mary Beth, Terry. We should go in order. It makes it easier. <laughs> okay. The so I think David's, David's next. David. Mm. Sorry, David. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know Nobody. how that order happened. Anyway, um, my name is David Lloyds. Uh, I don't know exactly how I got to the Cooperative Catalyst, but I think I was like number 10 or 11, and I haven't looked back <laughs> since. I was pretty excited to join when I did. Um, I'm a, a student, a teacher, a transformation change agent, a blogger. Uh, I work for uh, as a community organizer for uh, Institute of Democratic Education in America. I go to Goddard College. Um, what else? Pretty much everything. Say, uh, say a little more about that institute. What is that? Oh, uh, idea is. Uh, a pretty brand new uh, organization working to um, do both grassroots and national campaigns and initiatives to help uh, promote the tools that uh, that help 
students, teachers, community members um, enact the change in education that everybody's looking for. Uh, that's, I guess, the short pitch of it. Um, my own work has been doing just to listening to people and talking to people and asking uh, and just kind of engaging them in the conversation of what they would like to see changed in, in schools in their community and just just basically getting that conversation started. Okay. All right, Beth, I think you're next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the only reason I said order is because Google Plus is weird. When people start trying to talk at the same time, it like flashes pictures and all that kind of stuff. So um, my name is Mary Beth Hertz. Uh, I teach in Philadelphia. I'm a technology teacher um, for kindergarten through now seventh grade. Um, I don't remember exactly when I was asked to join the co-op, um, but I was excited by it. Um, and as far as the reform thing goes, um, I, I definitely am involved in a lot of conversations about reform that look nothing like what we think about as far as reform on television and on the nightly news. And I, it's nice to find in the co-op a group of people with that similar uh, mindset that, you know, as Chad said, transformation, um, you know, we're about focusing on the positive and what works a lot, and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of that going on. So we try to talk about what works rather than what's broken. And that's exciting. Cool. Go ahead, Terry. Terry. Okay, uh, my name is Terry Elliott, and uh, I um, I teach at Western Kentucky University. Um, I teach uh, Intro to Lit, Composition, Research Methods, and um, I'm a tech liaison for the writing project here at Western, and for the Kentucky Writing Project. And I do a lot of work with I I work with teachers a lot, uh, especially teaching them in social networking tools. I've uh, been running summer camps for uh, technology for the last three years, and as far as reform is concerned, um, I kind of have the same problem with that word that I have with digital literacy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it means most of the time. <laughs> I know what digital illiteracy is, but I'm not sure about digital literacy. Um, and uh, the same thing with that reform. You know, what are we reforming? It seems like a real protean sort of creature. Uh, even inst you know established institutions are are all very different in different parts of the country. So um, you know I'm I I came to this uh, via I think I I got a post I read a post from Paula or Shelley about this and I said I just started stuck my nose in and uh, I just kept going further into the tent and I'm I'm not my nose is in the tent but I'm not sure if much of else else is in. I'm a pretty light user on the on the co-op so far, but I'd like to do more. All right, thank you, Terry. Cool. Um, all right, and there's Greg. Greg. Welcome, Greg. Welcome back. Greg, do you, you want to try to introduce introduce yourself? You hear us sure, there? I'm still. I I just actually downloaded, I have a MacBook Air and I just downloaded a new image of Ubuntu and it's taking up all of my application memory. So I'm struggling getting everything organized here. Um, yeah, so my name's Gregory Hill. I'm a second grade teacher in St. Louis. I uh, used to be a Spanish teacher for four years, uh, K through eight, uh, transitioning in the second grade, looking forward to working with the younger students. Um, my main sort of reason, I guess, my for being in Co-op Catalyst is um, being a voice sort of in the um, um, community education slash inner city schools realm, I guess, to pigeonhole myself. I work a lot with uh, uh, old technologies. I work a lot with Linux. Uh, I work a lot with um, redistributing laptops. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask. You're not doing a very good job at it. Um, I've also yeah, started an organization called uh, the Disruption Department. Uh, which I, I'll post a link into the chat room, which uh, takes a lot of the things that I've benefited from my PLN and benefited from the co-op, uh, a lot of the things that I've learned over the last four years, um, and taking a local focus in St. Louis. So redistributing um, any laptops that we can have donated, while also starting a lot more grassroots professional development um, led by 
uh, teachers in inner city schools that address a lot of the socioeconomic economic concerns, a lot of the things that are happening that are making our job look different probably than what a teacher in a suburban or independent school would. Um, so uh, this whole year we're embarking on this, I guess, uh, blogging experiment in which at the end of the year we'll take all of the discussions that have existed and we'll start deciding what, uh, uh, I guess, direction the, the Department Department will take, whether that be a school, whether that be an organization, whether that just continues to be an online community, um, whether that just be a, a resource hub for kids in the neighborhood. Um, at this point, we don't know. But it's exciting, especially all of the help that I've gotten from the co-op, which is nice because it gives me another audience of people who are really super smart and can read the things that we're doing and provide us with some insight. Um, but uh, yeah, so that in a nutshell is what I've been doing over the last year. And I've, I've really been excited to be a part of the co-op because it, it gives me a group of people that I feel like are both um, you know, kind of divergent in their, uh, maybe in their, what they participate in, participate in, but uh, are very similar in the commitment they have to, um, you know, transforming education in a forward-thinking way. So it's been an exciting year. And Monica is the one who put me in touch with everyone, so I, I give mad props to Monica. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> cool. uh, uh, that, that was, go ahead. No, go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that 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 was a kind of a great segue to, to another question that, that I have for, for people on co-op and, and times like this when we have the chance to talk. Um, I, I'm curious. Greg described a lot of this and what he just said. I'm curious about how what what about the co-op speaks to the work that that you're passionate about, and how does that work kind of inform what you bring back to the co-op? Um, you know, the co-op we didn't just show up there to kind of talk about what we're talking about. We all had motivating discontents beforehand. Uh, we're all really engaged now in all kinds of things. Um, and so as we talk about it, I, I hope somebody on the, on the chat, I'm not so good at multitasking. With, with this much There's experience. a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. But if somebody could be I'm actually knitting underneath the table. <laughs> as, they, um, as they mention things, uh, you know, John, Paula mentioned John's post from today that I have a voice post. Uh, as you see things, just invite people to come on over and talk about them here as well. But to get back to it, so how does how does the cup relate to what you were doing already, or, and how do they go back and forth? Um, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I basically, what I really appreciate about the co-op is that everybody's really smart, um, and I would say sometimes smarter than I am, I feel like, and I get to, and, and nobody's, we're, we have this community where no one's afraid, how do I put it, um, people challenge your ideas but not in an aggressive way and they challenge your, you know, push your thinking and so you know I take that back to my classroom and I take that back to my own experiences because you know I might be running along this path thinking oh XYZ XYZ and then all of a sudden somebody throws it an S and I'm like oh my goodness S I never thought of S and now I gotta incorporate S into my thoughts so I, that for me that's kinda how I you know, I bring my ideas there and sometimes it even happens in the uh, <laughs> sorry I'm reading chats um, sometimes I even read uh, it happens in the comments. It doesn't even happen in the actual post. Um, and I wish that I was able to read more and comment more because there's some really great conversations that happen within the comments um, from the posts that are up there. Can can I just uh, point? I I just wanted to point out that you guys are are real interested, in, and I I totally understand your interest in keeping things positive and talking about things that work. But I also hear lots of language like motivating discontents and um, you know disruption and things like that. So I guess I guess I want to I want to ask that you kind of figure out how to talk about you know and challenges how to talk about how how you are al also challenging the status quo. I mean, is that fair to say? Well, sure. And we yeah, do have okay. a couple of new people here. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and other people can, can come along after this or interrupt me. Um, you know, when we talk about, it's just like that word reform. You know, what, what works is a phrase that's been used an awful lot. And what we're particularly interested in terms of what works is what pushes schools further ahead? 
what makes them places that are more student-centered, more democratic, where kids are driving, they're learning through through inquiry, and, and teachers as facilitators and guides, not as um, managers and, and taskmasters. Not that I have this single, you know, um, all, you know, view of school like it's it's Oliver, but uh, traditionally there's there's less control given to students than I think there needs to be for them to really take advantage of the time that they have to, to learn early on in their lives. So when we talk about what works, we're really talking about what works in challenging the status quo. We're not talking about what, what works in raising achievement scores. We're talking about you know what works in moving the conversation and the work of schools to a new place. I think too, and I don't use the word political in the sense of you know the political process or political parties, but I think one of the, I, I, the initial things that I was drawn to about the co-op was that it sort of made education political in the sense that it became a discourse that could be applied in reality. So Mary Beth was talking about, oh, well, this brings up things in my mind that I wasn't thinking about. I thought that I was um, rolling along and doing things perfectly until I, I, I hit some speed bump. The same, I think the same thing comes from the sense that we're um, this community that can talk about anything from public policy to pedagogy, but all at the same time. So rather than having to like put on a hat of, oh, now we're gonna talk about public policy and taking that hat off and saying, oh, now we're gonna talk about how to teach uh, ordering fractions. We have this like consistent approach to, all right, right now the way that we're doing things itself is a, um, a political act. The way that we're transforming learning is a political act, rather than just saying, oh, well, let's try to do things the way that they've been done, but better. Now, the very fact that we're having these conversations is transformative. The very fact that we're continuing to provide support to um, the people who are posting on the co-op is transformative. And it's only, you know, it's seeming like, especially like reading John's uh, post today about voices, you know, it's, it's snowballing in a positive direction. But you know, to me, that's a really great thing that we're not just having these, you know, resource sharing conversations. This isn't just a resource blog or a tech blog. Um, this blog has a much wider scope and emphasis, I feel like. So Paula White joined us. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Hi, Paula. I think yep. Paula was having issues so, with the sound. OK. I don't know. <laughs> we'll Are you there, Paula? Ahead. I almost heard it. And uh, Thomas Steele Ma Mallon? Yeah. Can you hear just, me? Just, oh. oh, there you go. <laughs> There's Paula. Hi, Paula. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Uh, we can. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> OK. Um, I'm Paula White. I'm a gifted resource teacher in Albemarle County, the same system that Chad works in, and um, was one of the original co-founders of the co-op and for me it's about the conversation and the transformation that you guys help me do by the thoughts that you share and the actions that you share so I'm absolutely loving the whole idea of this conversation tonight and being able to actually put real faces with the uh, names and the thoughts behind the names that's cool <laughs> <laughs> And Thomas, can you check in or not? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm Thomas Steele Maley. Uh, currently uh, from Mid Coast, Maine, um, about an hour north of, of Portland, Maine. And uh, I've, I do a range of things. Um, I've been a uh, secondary school teacher, uh, an experiential educator, um, a doctoral student, all of those things I, I sort of still do. Um, new to the co-op uh, and uh, joined uh, upon uh, suggestion from someone I, I respect quite a bit, Monica Hardy, and uh, so that's that's where I, where I am. Definitely uh, interested in design and praxis and democratic education, critical education, um, and uh, and so yeah. Mm -hmm. And design is a good word there. Jamie's been bringing it up in the in the chat on ed tech, ed tech talk. Um, part of that change and transformation really is redesigning and restructuring how it is. I think schools operate and function and what they do. Um, so as we, as we go on, I'd continue to you know, people can chime in about 
the connections they see between their work and, and the co-op. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm interested in. So what? What is it that? What What's the vision that drives each one of us? I think there's a lot of complementary um, beliefs in, in our writing and in our commenting and in the push that we do together. Um, I'm really interested in like you know five, ten, twenty years out, whatever whatever the time frame is for realizing some of the things we'd like to say at whatever scale they they can happen. You know, what do we think that the role of a student ought to be? What should teachers be doing? What should schools be like? Little question. Little question. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Well, I mean, well, I, oh, I, go ahead. No, I was gonna say one of the things that I really that really got me at the beginning was what kind of that process that Chad was going through and uh, his kind of transformation in himself was like really drew me into the process because I was really in my own head talking about what I thought education should be and I was so far away that whenever I had conversations with people there was roadblocks because I thought I knew everything mm. and listening to Chad through his posts talk about that kind of his own transformation it kind of humbled me a little bit and also made me think of like how can I help nudge people in that direction with and nudge myself maybe to more towards the center so that I can have conversations with people instead of just lecturing them um, so yeah. I mean I don't so, know where that was in the, the with the question you just asked but something I felt like I needed to say that's cool I mean that helps to find the co-op in some way because you're supporting and helping each other understand the message and you're getting a message out so you're kind of doing both things in some way it sounds like that... and also what's amazing is yeah. and I'm jumping in here but we don't always agree mm -hmm. and we don't always come from, I mean I, there's people it's in an international group and we've got, um, you know, private school, we've got public school, urban school, rural school, you know, we've got a whole bunch of different um, viewpoints. So I think charter part school. of that is charter school, yes. <laughs> um, they're public. They count. Yeah. Traditional public charter. Um, and some places. But yeah. And what? Oh. Wow. So I guess going along with the, what the devil is in the detail and all of that. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But going along with what Dave was saying, it's like the idea that you, um, I don't know, like you said something about the center and that idea, it kind of does bring you to the center because you get this perspective from so many different places. I mean, I don't, you know, some of the people in the co-op just describe these, these educational settings that they're in and it's like, wow. You know, mm. wow, you're doing this amazing stuff, and I'm in North Philly, teaching test. You know, where they're getting test prep 45 minutes, you know, every single day, starting in second grade. So mm -hmm. it's really awesome for me to have conversations with people and realize that that's not what education has to be, and that there, you know, the idea of getting around that, um, you know, the situation that I'm in doesn't have to be like that, and that I get my eyes open to the way it could be. Terry, you have any thoughts you want to jump in on? <laughs> um, I'm thinking about, um, you know, for me, what the co-op has done is, uh, you know, the, the buzzword of, uh, buzz acronym of uh, PLNs, Personal Learning Networks, has mm -hmm. got me thinking in terms of uh, the, transfor the transformation that co-op Catalyst has, has made in me is that it has, it can't just be a little echo chamber of one. You know, me living in my little personal learning network, um, and the few people that I let in. It's I've kind of worked. I'm working on personal action networks. You know, um, I, I've got a I've got a a, a Google form that I've created. Uh, some people have added to it, uh, but Co-op uh, Catalyst inspired it, and it's a place to go where people can uh, actually look at stuff that they can do. And I think that's for me. Co-op is. Um, is about what can I do uh, that grows out of these conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, can we stay on that tip a little bit about the personal? Um, cause, because one of the questions that I think people ask when they come to your site is, why aren't these people blogging on, I ask, <laughs> you know, why, why don't they have their own blogs? And you, many of you do have your own blogs, but what's the difference between being on the co-op and why do you need the co-op and why not just have your own blog? Is that question clear? <laughs> yeah. You know, Paula, yeah. you want to you wanna try that one? 
Did you say Paula or Paula? Paula. Yeah. Paula. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I think I do want to try that one because I've actually had a couple of thoughts as you guys were talking. Um, the co-op for me is a place for conversation. And while my personal blog is also a place for conversation, I find that I um, get challenged more over here at the co-op. Most of the comments on my personal blog are rah, rah, yeah, hey, that's really good kind of comments. <laughs> and over here I get asked questions. I get challenged, and I think that's really, really important. Plus, the other people's viewpoints, as somebody said earlier, make me think about things. One of the things that, that I struggle with as an elementary teacher is kind of what Mary Beth was saying, and I'd love to know what Gregory has to say about this too, is when we're talking about kids directing their own learning, one of the things that I'm passionate about is kids' competence and how much they can do for themselves. But in a public school where I'm required to teach standards and I'm told what I have to teach, um, I struggle with how to set it up. So hmm. I think we lost her. Okay, it wasn't just me then. <laughs> yeah. Paula, we're not hearing you if you're hearing us. Um, just okay. I'll, I'll pick up a little bit from there. Um, yeah, go ahead. You know, and, and what David was talking about, David came in at a time, uh, Co-op Catalyst and even even my, my own blog were both started uh, in response to just kind of, uh, kind of foundering in the classroom. Like I, I felt like I was in the... I felt like I was in the, the right place and I was working with the kids I wanted to work with, but I, I was not doing a really great job. And what I was falling back on was what I had already done. Um, and so I just needed to let go of an awful lot and try an awful lot of different things and, and things that gave the students more of a say in what they did. And even before that, gave the students enough trust in me that if they went out and took a risk and, and directed some things themselves, you know, I wasn't going to come back with uh, some kind of traditional screed about what they should be doing with their time. So for me, the, one of the reasons to have a co-op was to kind of write into existence a community uh, and a accountability and um, support just for making those changes and for learning to be uh, a teacher of um, self-directed learner. Uh, Say a little more. How, how, how is it different when you write into the co-op? How does your writing well, process I, differ? I feel like, you know, my, my investment is the post, and then I really want to go out and do the things that I'm inspired to do by all these wonderful people. You know, when they come in and they join, and, or they're recruited, and they post, and they comment, and we've recruited many people from the comments, um, when they contribute their ideas uh, and in kind of just like a really great and open way challenge you to do better by yourself and by your students, it, it's inspiring, it's humbling, and it, and it makes you want to go out and do that um, in a way that sometimes the yay rah rah comments on your, your own blog don't do because people are recognizing your struggle, they're acknowledging your struggle, they're not downplaying it, and they're trying to help you past it in ways that are you know just new to you and, and beneficial to your students it's great what I found different from uh, like I have a tumblr blog that now has like uh, you know 1100 followers but nobody asks questions on tumblr they just all kind of resource they sharing. like it yeah they, uh, they but they resource <laughs> share and then when you start when you challenge them they get really defensive really fast and I found that doesn't happen I mean there's times when I've had kind of arguments or debates with people on the co-op but it always comes back either from another person challenging us or because of the time in between the comments or it just it always comes back and I don't see that the reflective nature on other blogs um, other spaces on the in the internet at least where I am going. David can you can you can you tell us about one of those debates one of those arguments you had well we've had a I spent on the I had there's a group of tumblr teachers on tumblr and recently I kind of po some people posted some stuff about homeschooling and unschooling and there was this this one, one of the teachers went really kind of blasted homeschooling and she got some some back some questions back saying like maybe you shouldn't uh, 
you know, be so uh, describe homeschooling and unschooling the same way. And she kind of was really flippant about them even, you know, kind of asking that question. And so then I went on and tried to, you know, give some of my knowledge about unschooling and it just didn't go anywhere. It just kind of got very petty very fast. And, and so I just decided to, you know, go back to the co-op okay. and find somebody to, you know, that talked about unschooling and then just post on there instead of, uh, instead of going into the, the conversation because it just kind of kept hitting dead ends and dead ends and dead ends. And it was, it was, it was sad for me because my whole like passion is to get people talking about kind of the alternatives um, in education and not to just kind of be stuck in what they're already doing. But. There's also a really great Tumblr blog, the passive aggressive notes that we leave each other after we leave the comment section of the blog. <laughs> um, you know, we, we try to keep it to the Tumblr blog. And I think the best thing for me is the same reason that I started even having my students go online is that it improves everything that I do. Like if I have an idea that I'm going to put in front of my kids who are going to be my like most critical audience, right? Whatever I give them, I'm instantly going to know whether or not it's a good idea or not. Um, the co-op because I know that someone's going to post on everything that I do, unlike my personal blog, I always am going to take an extra step to polish it. And that's going to give me an extra step mm. to think about it. And that's going to ensure that I'm really, really, even if it's a risk, even if it's an idea completely out of left field, I'm going to think about how I articulate that to make sure that it meets the audience and make sure that it's going to actually create a good conversation. It also See, is like a self, go ahead. No, no I'm just um, echoing, I think. So you're saying that you pay attention to your audience more on the co-op than you would on your personal blog. Absolutely, I think is this a, it, for one, it's a different audience. I mean, it's not just a world language or now elementary school teacher blog. The co-op is where I go to express my broader ideas. My personal blog, I'm probably gonna share something that I'm doing in my classroom that relates specifically to being a second grade teacher or being a Spanish teacher. With mm -hmm. the co-op, sure. I know I, I I'm not going to alienate any of my followers on my personal blog who might only be interested in receiving um, resources or receiving some sort of a reflection on an idea that I implemented. With the co-op, I know there's no limit to what I can talk about. And that's a really empowering thing for, you know, I'm probably, I'd venture to say, probably the least experienced teacher in the co-op. At this point, I've been teaching for three years to my fourth. Um, I'm also probably the youngest one. So the ability to have a group of people that aren't just new young teachers to talk to and bounce ideas around and that make me feel like I'm a professional. I mean, that's, a, that's a, something that I don't exactly get at my own school. So to have the co-op to be able to at night or even during the day go to and say, all right, here are my ideas and to have people actually engage with me on that uh, is a really empowering experience. And I've grown as a teacher because I have that. I can engage in wide ranging conversations and then on my personal blog, I can share those smaller conversations that are going to help us out day to day. Hmm. That, that, was, that was terrifically well said. Um, I, I often feel kind of the same way. I work at a really I'm small. I'm going to take your. I'll take your passive aggressive note off the Tumblr blog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I work at a really small school, and and like, there's not the same opportunity that I experienced in the past at a larger school. Of uh, you know, you go going down the hallway, finding your girlfriends. We're, we're a team that, that really has to, to work together, but there's not this wider community to go and try ideas out with. It's a very uh, a small teacher community. And what the, the co-op kind of gives me, it's like, you know, if I could build a school culture, if I could build an adult culture for education in a school building, the, the co-op would, would, would be it. You know, what's missing from the co-op is maybe a little geographic proximity and, a, and the funding to start our own school. But in terms of the culture and just the willingness to, that's been said before. It's the one to question and push. It's, it's a real critical kind of solidarity. It's great. Paulo, did you want to throw in there? You jumped in with us. Well, yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm a relatively new member of the co-op, uh, thanks to Chad Sansing. And um, I just wanted to talk about uh, something that Terry brought up, which is this idea of um, a personal action network. Um, and that's how I engage with the co-op, um, you know, thanks to Chad around a, a blogging um, effort to support uh, the National Writing Project as we were facing um, funding uh, cuts from the federal government. And uh, the thing that was really remarkable about this was uh, just the outpouring of, um, of blog posts from around the country. So it was essentially the, 
the Catalyst community, you know, those um, those of us on, you know, in, in this hangout right now, um, but then, you know, and everyone else um, making the decision to facilitate um, a, a larger community of writers um, to essentially try to enact, um, you know, change to, to really oppose, you know, what they felt like was um, an unfair uh, decision by the federal government. And, um, you know, there was uh, not only hundreds of blog posts, but responses from, you know, um, or, or efforts to reach out to the Department of Education. Um, it was really a, an incredible uh, effort and example, I think, of democracy in action, which I think is really what the Cooperative Catalyst is about, ultimately, from my perspective. Well, Annette, going along with that, Paul, the idea of the, the you use the word democratic, and uh, uh, and I'm actually a member of two co-ops. I blog for the Cooperative Catalyst, but I also am on the board for a food co-op. So I've been obsessed with this idea of flat leadership and just kind of the idea of organic communities that kind of build around a common theme or common goal. And so I think that the, there's the co-op is just unbelievably democratic. I mean, we never we would never tell somebody no you can't post that you know we have like private emails that go back and forth where someone says oh can somebody wants to do this and you know can we post that because this is a person that wants to guest post and I don't even remember a time where somebody said no you can't post it so just that idea of being you know just never shooting down an idea and being open to any idea out there I mean granted we haven't had like Rush Limbaugh say I want to do a a blog post on education, but you know, I don't no. know what would happen. We probably would let him do it. <laughs> but uh, no, you have just, community norms. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, well, but I just, well, I just, you know, that idea of dem democracy as a group. I, I, I think I've heard Chad at least describe uh, some decision making, and I was wondering if you guys could describe how you decide to have a common theme for a while or an issue that you're addressing for a few weeks or you don't decide to do that, or you just let it happen naturally? How, how have you worked that out a little bit? Because I think you did try to have some common questions at some point, didn't you? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the beginning, and then people should also just jump in and talk about what inspires them to post that they do now. At the beginning, we were um, very much trying to figure out democratic education for ourselves and the kinds of changes we might need to do to make it work. In, in, the, in the places we were, and that was Aaron and Aaron and Adam and, and Paul and I, and so we went through. We had kind of like a, you know, like a roadmap of eight or nine or ten topics, and an idea to do a couple book reviews here or there. We got to our first book review. I don't know five or six weeks in, it was Kirsten Olson's "Wounded by School," and then she saw our posts and came and commented on them, and uh, was gracious enough to join us. And we recruited her. And, Around that time, other people started coming aboard. Casey Corona came on board, uh, and he was great at the beginning. He really pushed us and asked, you know, like, I mean, wait, what else could we do? And why are we doing it this way with the set topics? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what if I wanted to post this then, or was inspired by something else? And how how do we have to do this? So we experimented with weird cascading schedules and things, and and it worked when it was small. And it worked when. We were kind of there to do the democratic education thing, but as we kind of got to the end of that road and thought about, you know, okay, what else do we want to write about? I think Casey's ideas really stuck with us, and we just tried to open up the topics. And there's talk in the back channels now and again about, well, do you want to talk about this this week? Is somebody going to respond to this article and this paper or that paper? Um, but I think the most common topic that we might organize, organize around now are these movements that we want to help, the Blog for NWP, the Blogger March for the Save Our Schools March. Um, that That's the way I see it. Um, it's a community of great trust, and, and we trust one another to, to bring things to the table that are important to us and that we can value and help each other with. Um, and occasionally we hit on something like a campaign that, that many of us want to buy into, and we kind of hash that out in the back channels and then, and then run with it with uh, a group of people who are committed to it. And we, I, think, we I think the other thing to piggyback on what you're saying that's good is that we don't really have to plan posts. I mean, there's no situation in which no. we have to lay out this long-term plan of how we develop. The great thing about blogging is that 
since we are able to produce whenever we want and whoever wants to produce within the community, um, a post that doesn't get a lot of traction doesn't get a lot of traction. I mean, I've had posts that haven't been read by anybody and haven't been commented on by anybody, or maybe just Chad who comments on all of my posts, which is really nice. But, um, but then there are some posts that have been commented on lots of people, by lots of people. And so I think in sort of the, the internet currency is, you know, social capital, um, a post that really catches people's fancy, then it's something that's going to get a lot of traction. One that doesn't, then maybe it wasn't good timing or maybe it wasn't something that people were interested in. So I don't think we have to like sit back and consciously design what we're doing. I think it just depends on the relevance of each post and it depends on the relevance that the group is seeing at that point. But I think that's one of the things that uh, Mary Beth was talking about in a, in a cooperative is that it is organic. It does just sort of, an idea hits me, I don't sit down and say, all right, well, does this fit with what we're doing right now? I say, okay, well, is this something that the co-op would be interested in? Maybe. All right, I'll post. If not, then I'll post on my personal blog. So I think that's one of the really great things about this is that since it's not one person asking for, let's say, the other model that I've seen is, you know, guest posts, right? So if you have mm -hmm. guest posts, then it's one curator saying, hey, will you write a post about such and such thing? With the co-op, we all have administrative pur uh, privileges on WordPress, so we can all just post any time we want to. No one has administrative oversight. No one has editing privileges. Uh, you just post. And I think Chad said that the trust that we have for one another um, allows that to work really well. Uh, so it's something that it's, it's a great to be a part of for that reason. So. Yep. Part of the editorial like body of us is just the people who have the most en either energy or passion at that time or you know certain people have weeks where they're a little bit more active. Some people disappear for months at a time and then come back and I mean, some people like to really. I like. I'm. I really love to go on Tumblr and Facebook and, you know, and share share posts from other people. Some people stick to Twitter. I mean, it's it's it is organic, and there's no, the leadership kind of goes up and down based on who has passion or energy for one type of uh, thing. I mean, be it web the web design, the web presence, anything from you know. I like to get guest posts people because it, it's in, it's fun for me to kind of have that kind of back channel conversation with them to help them mm -hmm. put their posts together, you know. We uh, we did, ha oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just thinking about the, where we had talked about, I, I David just mentioned the web design and I was putting in the chat mm -hmm. that we did go through a couple designs and changes that had to be kind of agreed on by a group of, you know, our, us as a group, and most of us had never met face to face. And what we did end up doing, which actually I thought was kind of interesting, was we ended up um, creating um, certain categories for our blog posts. And that was because at, at first it was just like the tags were out of control because when you have what ten <laughs> or twelve people posting, everybody's like, "Oh, I should be my own tag, whatever," and the tag, however. Right. And we actually did manage to agree on using a certain set of categories and tags to help kind of begin to organize this huge, you know, it, it be, you know as the co-op grew and there were more and more posts, it got hard to actually find a post. So, right. you know, we did actually, you know, we have had, I had, had to have, you know, as much as democratic and organic it is, there is a, a method to the madness because if there wasn't, then, you know, it just, we get overwhelming in trying to um, really keep the conversation easy to follow. So we did have what, to go through that process. What are some of those categories? If you can, <sighs> somebody can say. Uh, there's education, philosophy, <laughs> learning, yeah, learning its best, teacher stories. And mm -hmm. we even argued about like, should Ed reform even be, not argued, I shouldn't say, because it's not really it's an okay. argument. But, <laughs> well, no, no, we're well, no, no feelings for her, as from what I remember. Okay. But uh, you know, trying to talk about the idea of the the label of Ed Reform. Do we want Ed Reform to even be a category? And you know that. So you, going back to the way beginning, you know, when you had mentioned about what is Ed Reform, and um, you know, we all have different definitions for it. So even within our group, we discussed: well, do we want Ed Reform to be a topic at all? Oh. Um, Terry, I was wondering if you could tell us more of some of the personal action networks. What other ones are in that form? I saw it right before the show, but I 
didn't take close note. <laughs> um, well, it's just uh, for me. It's uh, I've just started. Uh, you speaking specifically about about the the Google I, form that I've started? Yeah. Like what what else is on there? What are some of the other personal action networks that we might be paying attention to? This well, one thing I added today was uh, John Spencer's blog post, mm -hmm. um, and uh, in it he talks about, uh, well, it's, what was the title of it? I have a voice, but what can I do? And mm -hmm. it fit perfectly in with what I was trying to, you, to do for myself, and I hope for help other people do, is, you know, you come to the Catalyst and you say, well, what can I do? Well, you know, he sort of answered that in a way today. Um, so on the on the Google form, I just listed that blog post and had mm -hmm. some suggestions as to what you could do. Um, I think I don't know how many people come uh, come to the site thinking about what what can I do, but I think more people than we realize. I think we talk mm -hmm. theory. I think theory is eminently practical, uh, but then we also need to give people things to do. And I put the SOS. Um, uh, on there, um, I don't know, just a bunch of things. I think there was a movie that I, an Ed movie, an Ed documentary that I put on there. You know, all those things that you could view, talk about, write, stand up and shout. Um, and there's maybe 10 things on there. And I'm hoping that, that, that more people will, it's an open public document, so I'm hoping more people will contribute to it. Right, and I hope somebody's getting that in the Ed Tech Talk uh, chat room if they haven't yet. Um, but we'll work on that, getting that out. Um, can uh, we we have oh I don't know 13 minutes left here. Um, let's leave enough time to talk about save our schools and what you guys are doing about it. Can somebody start from the beginning on that? Um, let's say you've been so involved in your your national writing project summer <laughs> that you uh, you know your head is in your own writing and you didn't hear about this. Tell let us know what is save our schools all about. Can somebody. Break that down and then say what the Catalyst is doing, co-op Catalyst is doing. <coughs> Sorry. Somebody want to take that on? <laughs> uh, I could try. I, I suggested okay. Paula come over too. Paula, um, Paula and um, we actually have a, a few other uh, Catalysts who are even more involved and on like okay. planning committees, I believe, uh, with the Save Our Schools March. Um, Save Our Schools is, is kind of a long-standing in the social media world uh, event plan agenda to bring together all educational stakeholders students parents administrators uh, lawmakers and really talk about how to reclaim I don't know, local authority over our schools um, but not in a kind of you know federal government get off my schools lawn kind of way in a way that talks about let's get back to what's really important let's get back to the core of education we're losing sight of it we're standardizing things corporatizing things there's a lot to be learned about the world and about citizenship and about you know just what it is to be a person at the local level at schools and kids and adults can be trusted to do this without so much oversight intervention and interference mm -hmm. uh, and there's a conference in washington dc uh, several uh, big name keynote speakers. There's a march, I believe it's Saturday, July 30th, uh, in Washington D.C. And the co-ops piece is to um, help and. And does it go through August 1st? Is that right? It's uh, those two days. I, I think it's July 28th through the 30th. 28th. I think the conference is on the 28th. Oh, and here's Paul. I'll, I'll turn it over to Paul in just a second. Um, and, and our piece is blogger march. You know, whether you're there or whether you're not, and John's post is a great example of this, there's a lot you can do. If you can't do the one thing, you know, the one thing is never the one thing that's going to solve everything. There's a lot we can do, and Blogger March is one of those things. Are you there, Paula? Paula, we're asking about Save Our Schools. Are you there? Hello, hello? Well, I, can, like I, I can just yeah. talk about why we... I, want, I personally wanted to go to the march, but I live in Portland, Oregon, so... I can't make it all the way out there and so I was feeling a little bit like well what can I do to help and I, I loved what happened with the the writing project and um, blogger reform that blog for reform earlier this year and mm -hmm. I thought well this would be a perfect chance to you know do the same type of thing 
and for every, all these bloggers and teachers and parents and students who can't make it to Washington DC doesn't mean our presence can't be felt um, and hopefully ours you know the presence will live on you know on the co uh, cooperative catalyst for you know other people to look at later um, after the march is over and TV cameras have turned off and whatever mm -hmm. yeah it would be great to get people's reflections coming out of that event as well for, for an archive Mm -hmm. Andrea Zeller, can you hear us? I think you can. Can you talk? <laughs> Hello? I can okay. talk. Oh, no, there you are. Okay. Hi. I muted Welcome. my mic. Thank so you. So you joined us. What What would you like to add here? <laughs> or questions or thoughts you have? Oh, I had to come in late. So I'm worried that I missed the important information I have questions about, which is I'm excited about Blogger March. Anything... Did we lose you? We lost her. <laughs> okay, that's our job is to break this. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing we're doing a good job here. Beta. Uh, and Paula, anytime you can join us, please join us. Uh, tell us about Save Our Schools. Okay, um, can you hear you, me now? We can yeah. hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I was just thinking about Blogger March. I actually saw it tweeted out, went and checked it out, and saw uh, Teacher Ken's name on it, saw Sabrina's name on it, saw um, somebody else, I can't remember, but anyway, I saw three or four yeah, co-op names on it and then started reading it and thought, you know, this would be great to follow up the blog for NWP with and let's see if we mm -hmm. can get people going. And then I think it was David who suggested the term Blogger March in the uh, Google Groups area. Uh, David, wasn't that you that did yeah, that? I was, yeah, something close to that. Okay, so, you know, initially I, I had the post all set up and I was going to do blog for SOS March and then I love the term Blogger March because we're trying to get people to blog about this. <laughs> So I'm hoping that we can all add a request if you want to keep watch the door. Um, I haven't heard or not look today. Um, all right. Paula's going in and out a little bit, right? But so tell us what what's give us the prompt. What 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 you want us to blog for Blogger March? What do you want us to blog about? <laughs> Is that a fair question or? Well, one of the I things. I know already. Yeah. What Go do you ahead. want to blog about? <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> <coughs> um. Go ahead. Does somebody else want to answer that? That's a good answer. I'll I'll think about it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I I would look at the yeah. what uh, what Paula posted, and then think about how you would how you would you know what what would your sign say in the march, you know, in the protest. Mm -hmm. What what are what are your passions um, to help save our schools? Um, one thing I always tell all uh, new writers on the co cooperative is, you know, always try to make it a conversation in any you know the best way you can. So, what questions are you having? Why do you think there needs to be a march? Um, why, what are your concerns? Those are all good things that usually get a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. um, there's also there's a there's a resources yeah, page I mean, that has a number of position papers about you know funding, teacher evaluation, um, civics and citizenship education, and so if, if you if you, if your passion is for one particular area of policy or instruction, um, you can go and read those statements and see what they're pushing back against. And kind of add your voice in those areas as well. Mm -hmm. and, and how are these being collected together? Yeah, go ahead. So typically, we um, what, what we do is we ask whoever is the, the the organizer, whoever agrees to take on stewardship of the archive page, uh, just kind of puts it out there on the call to DM or send them the link or email them the link or just give them a heads up, uh, and then they'll pull the link into an archive page. And that'll link out externally and then for people who who want to say something who maybe haven't blogged before aren't sure how to do it um, the the co-op publishes guest posts for, for things like this for 
for, for guest posts that want to come in and write, especially on these campaigns. Um, and then like in the past, I, I think we're close enough to the march that it'd be a little bit hard to pull off, but Blog for NWP was kind of a longer um, campaign. And during that campaign, uh, the National Writing Project, and Paulo and Reach Out and site leaders that were involved, they set up um, posters, blogs and things like that. So people who were writing to their government um, could use email in essence to, to submit and to contribute their first blog post ever to that campaign. So the steward kind of finds a way to go out and, and get all that information coming into a few people who go onto that page and take care of it and archive things. Mm -hmm. Mary Beth, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just, good. I, we had talked about, um, and I guess I have to run and read John's post because I did not <laughs> touch my computer sure, at all today. Yeah, um, but uh, the idea of voice, I mean, I really see most of what is trying to happen with the, even the, the Save Our Schools March is all about, you know, teachers have a voice and let's make our voices heard. You know, I am actually working that week. I'm not going to be able to make it down. So how else can I share my voice through, through the co-op? So, you know, I guess it's that idea of, of making yourself heard and, and you know, getting your ideas out there. And there is no... Um, prescription for what you have to write it's just kind of you know we want to get as kind of gather as many ideas as possible mm -hmm. Andrea can you speak up there now just wanted to give yes, you a chance I can. Okay. I'm I keep having Google give me errors that the server hates right. me so um, I like this idea of the video post court postcard that's a great idea someone put that up up there um i definitely know what i'm going to be blogging about so What's that? <laughs> i am fired up <laughs> what are you going to be blogging about tell us i am really want to take aim at this commodification of education i guess is the best way to talk about it this idea that we have just outsized influence of business models of education in terms of Gates Foundation and uh, Arnie Duncan being one of the Broad fellows that were trained. And I think that that's, that in and of itself on its face isn't terrible, but I think that we definitely need to question some of that reasoning and thinking. And that's really where my mind, mind is right now because I, especially being in Michigan with our, our re we recently had a bill signed into law that took aim at, um, now it's easier to fire teachers, tenure protections are reduced and collective bargaining rights are reduced. And uh, it's definitely out, out of this idea that we need to have merit pay and all that race to the top stuff. So um, I just feel like we need to speak back and speak some truth to power for a minute. So oh. that's what I'll be blogging about. Great. <laughs> So what else What else is up for the co-op? You guys only have a couple of minutes here. We only have a couple of minutes left here. But in a, beyond Save Our Schools, what should we be looking for? Paul, well, one of the things yeah, that we had. Oh, boy. Paul, well, one of the things that we had wanted was more student voices. So hmm. we have done a... Um, blog on we need to I was hoping some of those um, well I'm gonna it's okay I'm gonna pick up on that and ask you guys this you know I Susan at and and uh, Chris Sloan and I have been running this, <laughs> this uh, site called student voices um, or youth voices sorry um, and and the same question about personal blog or individual blog or uh, group blog has always come up for us on that site. So I was just wondering if if I could pose it in this more general way. Um, what what do you think we've learned, be, you've learned through working on the, the uh, co-op collaborative that we could do in our classrooms with kids and, and getting their voices onto a site, for example. So, you know, I mean, it's a natural thing for teachers to set up they love blogging and they want to set up blogs for their kids or, or you know, to that effect. Not that you have to have an answer to this question yet, but that's, I'm curious to know what you've learned as professionals that, that we can bring into our classrooms. Can I pose it that way? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I, I think if, if Kirsten were here, she might she might talk about um, the joy and passion of learning. You know, I think we're, we're a community of, of passion. This is something that this shared work is something we believe in. Deeply and you've and chosen it. Yeah, yeah. And you've chosen it. Um, and so that doesn't necessarily look the same for every kid, but there's probably some ground where they, they can all come with their passions and find a way to talk with one another about it. And whether it's a blog or not, it's less important to me than that they get a chance to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And also I would, I would piggyback on that saying that, um, you know, we are empowered as learners on the co-op mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and also extending that idea that of empowering kids to, um, you know, follow their passions, but also just, to learn from each other and build those networks and and feed off other people's ideas and to accept other people's ideas even if you don't agree with them and learn how to have civil discourse and civil conversations that you learn from rather than like what David was talking about where you know you just kind of feel like you're in this endless cycle and you're just not getting anywhere um, so I mean that would be my my takeaway give back to the students mm -hmm. I think another thing too uh, additionally would be one thing that I want my students to come away from is that they don't have to ask permission to learn something. They don't have to ask permission or wait for anything. And none of us, you know, I was at, luckily invited to come to the co-op uh, sort of late to the game, but, you know, now that we write on there, we don't have to ask permission from policy groups. We don't have to ask permission from media outlets. We don't have to ask permission from anyone to do anything. We just do it. And if it's great, it's great. If it's not, it's not. I think that's the same thing I want my kids to be able to do. They don't have to wait for someone to teach them something. They can go out and they can do it on their own. If they want to change mm -hmm. the world, if they want to make the world that they want, then they're going to have to be able to do that and feel comfortable doing it. And mm -hmm. I think that whole like ethic of uh, sort of democratic learning that Mary Beth is talking about is essential. And unless our, it's, I think one of the things, I, this has been a reoccurring theme in a lot of posts that I've been reading uh, is maybe a, as a rhetorical flourish, but it's no longer an option. You know, it has to happen, um, especially, you know, from the perspective of kids in the city is that kids in independent schools and, and not to make this a socioeconomic thing, but some kids already have that chance because their teachers are further ahead than, um, you know, the schools that my students are learning in. And so mm -hmm. it's just not a choice anymore. It has to happen. And the, the co-op is, I talk to my, even my second graders, I talk to them that I do this because it, it models to them this idea to participate outside of when you're supposed to do something that you can still learn and you can still make a difference doing things that you're passionate about. So it's, 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 a, it's a good um, exercise in that. I would just add um, to is, oh, go ahead. Oh, go okay. ahead. I was going to say it just the simple like act of just asking them unconditional questions and just about their own learning, you know, without having an answer that you want them to give you yeah. and just mm -hmm. saying like, I don't have an, you don't have to give me a correct answer. Just like, what is it about your learning that's fun for you or passionate for you? And, and just, you know, let them ask that question either on a blog or, I mean, answer that question on a blog or not answer it, but just to think about it, I think that will kind of spur that kind of same uh, kind of energy yeah. that we have. In addition, I, I, I think there might be, I don't, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I think there's something about the democratic horizontal kind of building a community that we want kids to get involved in too. So, so, yeah, it's your passion, but it's also your passion within a community, um, mm -hmm. I think. Right. Um, Terry, you have any final thoughts here? We are. I, I think that uh, the co-op, it, it, it implies something. Um, we're not sure what it is, and that's okay. And it affords other things. We're not sure what that is, and that's okay, too. And it's that <laughs> open-endedness that is uh, pretty profound. And which keeps me coming back to read. I mean, I lurk more than I post, uh, but uh, you know that's that's what I love about the co-op catalyst. I, uh, I we're, we're well over time here. Um, we should probably quit. Oh, I love that we can see the cat there. But um, <laughs> that's Oscar. <laughs> that's <right. laughs> Chad, do you have any final thoughts before we end here, though? Uh, Everybody who says anything uh, really, really just kind of nailed it. It's so yeah, I think so. Uh, it's a it's a great community. There's uh, there's so many facets, but they all they all kind of belong together. Uh, and and I love writing and learning with these people. It's wonderful. Cool. Well, and, thank uh, you all. Me, me, yeah, go for, ahead. For people for people interested, like 
one of the, the posts I tried to get out during ISTE this year was for people who are interested maybe in joining the co-op or starting something like it or doing one of those things John talked about in his post today about, about using voice. Um, you know, as far as we're concerned, um, you know, if, if your drive is to serve kids in such a way that they take ownership of, of their learning, you know, come on down. Um, comment, get a feel for the, for the norms, uh, see what it is other people are saying, make some connections, and then when you feel ready and you want to offer something up and, and you want to kind of host a conversation, then that's the right time to do it. Hmm. Very nicely stated there. Um, and thank you for hosting this conversation for us um, here tonight. <laughs> thank you for, for being thank a wing call. <laughs> Thanks, and for putting up with the uh, experiment here. I want to thank Jeff Levo for helping us with that experiment. We thank him every week, um, but we are actually thanking him because <laughs> uh, he's helping us host. And over there in the chat room at edtechtalk.com is um, Susan Ettenheim, who's, uh, we're all going to learn how to do this, I think, the way you have to talk, um, and uh, see how it's going. I want to thank um, Dave Cormier also, who helps run EdTech Talk as well, and worldbridges.net. Um, thank you all, and we're going to say goodnight for tonight.